let's embark and see precisely what this envenomation will do to poor little old Jack. <laughs> oh, the container's really getting me, folks. Oh, man. Oh, ah! Ooh, oh, was that a little pinch? Oh, come on, get in there. Oh, okay, wow, that was a, wow, that was a really good pinch. Loxoceles reclusa, the brown recluse, one of the most feared venomous spiders in North America. I've heard everything from these spiders are deadly to they cause huge rotting sores in the flesh. But is this really the case? Chemically, when looking at the venom, we don't find much evidence to support these types of claims. So what does the bite of a brown recluse actually do? I've actually tested this once before, and I was quite surprised with the minimal results. So let's see if a second test will prove that these spiders are less dangerous than the public would have you believe. Now what you are about to witness is a documentation, a full documentation of an extreme Loxoceles reclusa, brown recluse envenomation. Now what you are going to see is probably not going to show up in about 95% of bites. This is going to be within the top 5% of extreme envenomations where you get enough venom to really cause a wide range of reaction and a systemic reaction throughout the body. Now I will preface this, that although this bite was extreme, it is once again not medically significant. What do I mean by that? It does not require seeking medical attention at an emergency room or hospital. This was treated completely at home through easily acquirable over-the-counter products and simple human hygiene. So, without further ado, I would like for you to enjoy this full bite documentation. Hopefully, you learn something new about these really interesting and unique spiders. Hello, everyone, and welcome back again to Jack's World of Wildlife. And of course, welcome back again to a brown recluse bite video. Now, you may be going, what? What did he just say? A brown recluse bite video, don't those like melt your arms off and, and shoot your family and leave you for dead in a ditch after they steal your kidneys and sell them on the black market? Common mistake. No, that's wrong. Brown recluse are common spiders across the southern United States. They kind of stretch around a little bit into the east. Not quite as common as some people would have you believe, and not quite the deadly adversary that others might claim them to be. This little spider here is one of the most feared venomous spiders in North America. Why? I couldn't tell you. Doctors, nurses, misidentifying wounds, gigantic bacterial infections run rampant, have caused such a horrible horrible reputation for these spiders. Is it deserved? No! Why don't you get bit then? Okay, I will. I have. And I'll do it again. My last video, if you care to watch it, was very in-depth and documented the full envenomation of a large female, Loxoceles reclusa, brown recluse, on an average-sized human male, a.k.a. Jack Sword of Wildlife. Now, the video did well, which I'm glad. It was primarily positively received, which I am glad, but we still had a lot of naysayers. A lot of people claiming, even after I told them the truth, that they themselves had had an attack on their lives from a teeny tiny little brown spider. 
So I'm here again to disprove all those people again. Sorry about it, not sorry. So I will be taking yet another envenomation from an adult brown recluse spider, Loxacelles reclusa, to once again. Okay, again. I want you guys to hear that word again. I have already proven this to you. Again, I shall create a video to prove the innocence of these spectacular little spiders. Not an animal to be afraid of, not an animal that can rot limbs off and cause huge necrotic craters in your skin, but a spider going about its life doing spidery things. Are you guys curious to see what the bite of a brown recluse will do? Am I just blowing hot air out of my posterior end? Or do I know what I'm talking about? Stay tuned. And one of those questions may be answered. So you may ask, well, hold on, Jack. Take a pause real quick. My auntie had her leg chopped clean off by a brown recluse. What do you have to say about that? I have three things to say, actually. One, did you see a spider? Or was this simply a big purple splotch on my arm? It's a spider bite. Or go to the doctor and they say, hmm, big purple splotch on your arm. It's a spider bite. Okay, first off, you didn't see a spider. Who's to say it's not an infected pore? Some kind of lesion that became infected? Bacteria is a real nasty thing, folks. I don't get why we're so set on blaming spiders when bacteria kills a lot more people a year. But I digress. Number one, did you see a spider? If the answer's no, wasn't a brown recluse. Number two, you did see a spider? Are you able to identify a brown recluse? Can you pick a brown recluse out of three different spiders? If you answer no, sorry, wasn't a brown recluse. And our third point being, did you use proper wound care management? Or did you say, oh no, a mosquito bite or something, I'm not sure. And just took the fecal, bacterial, mountains of germs underneath your fingernails and go, <sighs> Eat up, little wound. Have some bacteria for you. And then two weeks later, you went, I'm not getting better. Must have been those brown recluse. I would have been fine without those spiders here. Is that what happened? Be honest with me. This was not an overnight thing. And I don't want to get, it, I don't want to get any comments like, oh, I appeared overnight. On my bed sores in my back, I've been laying in bed for six months. And all of a sudden, I had a brown recluse bite there. Overnight, exploded. Huge, pus-filled, green ooze. I'm not going to believe you, bud. That sounds like a severe problem that you should have definitely gone to the doctor for. Okay? Please, for the love of all that is good, stop blaming spiders. Recognize that bacteria is very dangerous. Take personal hygiene as a priority in your life and clean wounds as you see them. Mosquito bites, ant bites, any type of break in the skin can become infected and can become life-threatening. Are you seeing a pattern here? Hearsay, random people, doctors who know nothing about entomology, none of them, listen, none of them are qualified to identify a brown recluse bite. Okay. I'm not doing this to be sassy. There is some pent up frustration from having to explain this time and time and time again. But unlike some other snarky keyboard warriors, I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. And if I tell you, hey, this spider's not dangerous, you better believe I'm gonna show you why. Now there's a tiny little component in the, spider, in the spider's venom called sphingomyelinase D, and it is an enzyme. And what it does is it causes necrosis, cell damage and tissue damage, right? Those huge, nasty, weeping, gaping sores in your arm could be caused by a heavy, large amount of sphingomyelinase D. However, 
What is this spider, folks? Tell me at home. Small, very small, very, very, very small. So what do you think about the quantity of sphingomyelin ACE D in this animal? You guessed it, also small. So the activity and the quantity of sphingomyelin ACE D, that component that causes necrosis, tissue damage, is too small in these Loxoceles reclusa to cause such extensive injuries. I would wager to cause any sort of necrosis at all. And if it does appear in very rare cases, it would be extremely minimal and easily treated. So you may be saying, hmm, okay guy, or you've stopped watching because I'm kind of coming off annoying in this video, but you wanna know what happens, right? You wanna know what happens if a brown recluse bites you. Not what somebody told you, not what a doctor said happened, but a real first person, fully documented account of what this bite will do. And I'm here to do it for you guys and gals and whomever else may be watching. Okay, I'm sorry for getting on to you all. I love you dearly and I just wanna educate you. That's all. So if you're still receptive to hearing me, despite me being quite passive aggressive towards you, all the power to you. And I'm really proud of you. So, lids off. <laughs> don't breathe the toxic fumes. Don't, don't let the face hugger attach to your face and deposit an egg inside of you, right? Just kidding, it's just a spider. So, there it is. I'm gonna let it calm down a bit. Once again, Loxoceles reclusa. The brown recluse, in my opinion, a relatively harmless spider. I don't find these to be medically significant, really, in any capacity. And there are those that would disagree with me. But from personal experience, from anecdotal experience, I have seen nothing that would warrant the re reputation that these spiders have. Calm down. They're like, but you're warm and sticky. That's grody. Quite interesting little spiders, if you boil it down. I like them, I think they're pretty. Now I'm not expecting for it to bite me this way, but I don't want it to run off, which is what it's gonna try and do the second I put it on my arm. Because despite popular opinion, spiders are not interested in, an, in interacting with humans at all, let alone biting them. Okay, come on, calm down. She's gonna like fall right in my lap the second I take this container away. I think Stop you're it. Doing more damage with the container than the spider will do. <laughs> oh, the container's really getting me, folks. Oh, man. Oh, 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 definitely worse than a tarantula hawk. Oh. JK RTFLOL. All right. Here. Ooh. It's a cool little move. <laughs> You get to see my wallet and my water, my water bottle in the background. Yeah. My supplies. Batman. Batman. I love Batman. I do like Batman. Anyway, let's uh, let's get let's get to the to the meat of this dinner, shall we? Or uh, I think you might have to take a different approach. <laughs> or uh, you know, oh, did it just bite me? Oh, my pen is full. <laughs> it just bit me. Um, <laughs> golly, I don't. Like, it's just gonna be so difficult to try and, like, get this container out of the way. Oh. Hey, cutie. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> See, the things I do for the creatures I love. Oh, what a sweet little brown recluse. Come here. It's all right. It's okay, sweet baby. I wanted this video to be shorter than my other one, but at this rate, sorry. Oh. Putting it on your face was reckless. You could get really hurt. So don't, where is it? On the back of my head? No, it's right there. Oh, my badge. I was awarded the got a brown recluse to bite me badge in Boy Scouts today. All right, enough of that. Let's uh, let's pin this spider, shall we? 
You guys have come for the show. Okay. I'll, I'll give you what you want. Come on. I just need like... I know, I just need to smash it on there. No, I don't want to hurt you. Oh. Ooh, oh, was that a little pinch? Oh. Come on, get in there. Oh! Okay, wow, that was a, wow, that was a really good pinch. Ow. Huh. All right, I'll let you go. Ooh, interesting. Wow, actually, that was a little pinch. I'm surprised, that hurt a lot more than my other one. So it bit me right in there. <gasps> oh God. Pretty sure the other one bit me while I was filming. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse, ground zero, right here in this little forest was me. Anyway, you can see it's a little bit pink, just to verify that I was bitten. So all the naysayers could say, hey, that didn't really bite you. If it was a real bite, you would have died already. No, sadly, sorry. I try and keep it over here, but it was in my hair. I'm follically blessed, so it might be a little hard to see. Now, here's what I'm expecting. I see it's right in there. Little hair, I'll move some of this hair out of the way. Got me right there. How sweet of her. She got me right there. Now, I think to the fullest extent, we might see what we saw in the previous bite, which was maybe some lymphangitis, which is not blood poisoning. It is evidence of bacteria in the lymphatic system, which can be easily addressed and your immune system can take care of it. That's why it is swollen. It's because your immune system's on it, taking care of you, taking care of me. So if we see that, that's gonna look like red striations going up my lymphatic system into my armpit. Nothing to be concerned about. Now I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. The second I notice a bump, what should I do? I should wash it with soap and water, right? To alleviate the risk of topical bacteria sneaking their way into the bite. Then what should I do next? I don't know. Might be a good idea to put some uh, topical antiseptic cream on there. Some antibiotics that you can buy at like CVS. Not doctor prescribed, because that was the confusion in my other video. But just some over the counter for little cuts and scrapes, you know, just to keep the wound clean. Put a bandaid on it if you want. Don't put a bandaid on it if you don't want. But doing that for about a week, week and a half, all effects should be gone. Maybe two weeks max, all effects should be gone. Okay? I promise, I'm not trying to get people hurt. I'm not trying to trick anybody. I'm not, there's no magic of the camera. This is done in one take. You can take a look here. See, there's a little bump now where she got me. Good envenomation. I actually felt it, which I'm surprised. It was a little bit of a pinch, not super painful. It's not gonna be systemic. You're not gonna be like seizing and gyrating. There's no risk of, of anaphylaxis from a spider bite. No risk of allergic reaction, severe allergic reaction. So it's okay. It's not the end of the world. These are not harbingers of death. They're spiders. If you're uncomfortable with them in your home, scoop them up, throw them outside. Nothing to be afraid of, nothing to worry about. And I am fully ready to show you why. So one last look, take a look at that. See that little circular little bump right there? That is a brown recluse bite. That's what that's gonna look like day one. A tiny pinch, nothing electric, nothing that you're gonna be like, oh, oh, jumping out of your seat with, okay? Tiny little pinch. Make sure, simple wound care, that's all you gotta do, okay? Now, I will note, should you believe you've been bitten by a brown recluse and in actuality have a horrible gangrenous bacterial infection that is super far along, 
please seek medical help. This is not a video to excuse actual serious bacterial infections that could become life-threatening or threatening of a limb. Please go to the doctor. But in terms of actually, truly what happens with a brown recluse spider bite, stick around and we're gonna find out. One last look. There she is, right next to her, her art piece. Let me see, I'll dump her out onto my arm. We're actually gonna let this gal go for being so cooperative. Easy. I want you to be on my arm nice and sweet. Nice and sweet, I said. going for the goodies the family jewels come here hey easy once again she's not trying to bite me and in fact these spiders can't even bite without exerted pressure their fangs are too small too brittle so they have to be pinned or pinched against the skin to bite you so in reality even if you are bitten by a brown recluse you helped them do it Really cool little spiders. Love them. We're gonna let her get to whatever it is she could be doing. These little cracks on this creek bed. She's gonna find a brand new home. There you go. Bye bye. A little pat for good luck. Well, stick around, folks. Make sure that I'm not uh, lying to you, okay? Brown recluse bite, Loxacelles reclusa. You can already see she actually did bite me twice. Take a look now. There's definitely something going on. Two little spots of inflammation. And we are going to take a ride down Education Lane because this is something I'm passionate about. Misunderstood animals, that's all they are, misunderstood. They're beautiful creatures. They've got a role in the ecosystems that they're a part of. They have a reason to be here, they have a life, and they're important. No reason, no reason at all, to have harbor such aggressive prejudice towards the beautiful animals that we share this planet with. So stick around and see if I'm telling you the truth or if I get to go to the hospital. Wow, take a look at this, folks. This is about I don't know, I'm gonna say 30 minutes after the initial envenomation. You can see there that kind of whiter spot as the epicenter. I am really excited to see how this plays out. This seems to be a little more severe than my first envenomation. However, I'm not expecting too many serious or complicated results. I'm thinking we're gonna see more of the same, maybe with a few add-ons, because this does appear to be a severe envenomation, but you can see this huge red patch is what you're going to see. So if you're just seeing a small little raised red bump, uh, there's a very real chance that that was a mosquito or maybe an infected pore or follicle and not, in fact, a brown recluse bite because look at that. That is a full red patchy mess, almost, almost rash-like in some areas. Very interesting. So it's not showing up super well on the camera, but this is actually super raised. I wish it would show better. Really puffy. Maybe if I turn this side, you can see a little bit. Huh. That is super interesting. Who'd have thunk? That's the wheel bug bite scar. Which actually, now that I'm looking at it, it might have been a little bit of necrosis. We'll see what the brown recluse bite does. But wow, look at that. Really bumpy. Wow, take a look at this, folks. This is the morning after. Look at that. That's actually the scar I have from the wheel bug bite. And this bite has actually discolored that as well as added a lot of color to my scar up here. And look at my skin. I don't know if you can tell, but my skin is red. 
That is really interesting. Hmm. I think that this is one of the more severe brown recluse envenomations that I have not only seen, but ever heard of, truly attributed. Look at the swelling. My body is nice and red. Other than that, I feel okay. Got a little bit of a headache, but I haven't eaten anything yet today, so I'm gonna drink some water and eat some soup. And I'm gonna put, I have a little over-the-counter, a little triple antibiotic kind of cream that I'm gonna put on this whole little epicenter. And uh, we're gonna see, it would be really interesting to see if we got some mild necrosis so I can show you guys from an extreme envenomation the full extent of the tissue damage. Cause I think that's what a lot of this coloration may be it is it's trying to destroy some of the cells here. Now we shall observe if this is gonna be enough to cause any sort of lesion, uh, which I'm excited to see, but doubtful that it'll be anything impressive. But that's already a lot more than my other bite, which is really interesting for the test pool. Here is what I'm gonna be using on the bite. I'm probably gonna put this on a handful of times a day, just on the afflicted area. Nice little over-the-counter Walgreens triple antibiotic ointment. Here we are on day three. You can see still a lot of discoloration, a lot of inflammation, and you can actually start to see some discoloration right at the site of the bite. So really, really interesting so far. A lot more severe than the previous reaction. So we're gonna see what exactly happens with this bite. Still on day three here, but now we're starting to see the blister develop. Uh, so my arm's kind of shiny from the triple antibiotic, but you can see right at the side of the bite, there is actually a little dermal blister, uh, which is holding onto some liquid. And that blister is actually going to get larger. Uh, so keep an eye on that area. Here we have the blister. It's a lot larger. We still have that dark kind of purple coloration around the area of the bite, uh, but you can see definitely the blister is m probably two or three times the size as it was the previous day. Well, I figured y'all might be tired of just the straight voiceovers, but that's been the easiest way for me to document everything. Let's take a look. There's the wheel bug scar, and here that kind of discolored blister looking patch is the actual brown recluse bite. Um, actually, my redness has kind of gone down. Um, I'm still a little red just on my body and whatnot, um, but my kind of body aches have sort of subsided for the most part. I have a bit of a headache today, but I think this is gonna be the full extent. I was hoping to see some mild necrosis here, but I think that little discolored blister is all we're really gonna get, but I'm very impressed so far. This has been a really, really extreme brown recluse bite. So I'm actually going to try uh, and see what a Benadryl will do to this, because that's a pretty commonly available medicine. I'm gonna see if it'll combat any of the swelling or anything. Uh, for use on extreme bites. So we're gonna see what a Benadryl is going to do. Once again, to this whole patch, this bruise and whatnot, and maybe to the redness of my body. We shall see. Now, here's where something really interesting and unexpected happened. So 
this is a good example of the redness that I had on my body, which I actually believe was a pseudo histamine response. So it's actually a component of the venom that is mimicking an allergy reaction, which is super crazy. Here we are, day five. I've got the triple antibiotic ointment over the counter stuff on there. Blister is a little yellow today. There's the wheel bug scar, but pretty much the exact same as yesterday and the day prior. I feel a little bit less achy, which is nice. Um, but other than that, I think we're starting to hit the kind of decline of the severe reactions. Once again, no need to travel to the hospital, no need for any prescription medication, and therefore I would not classify this as medically significant, although it has been a lot more uncomfortable than I was expecting. Very interesting little test. All right, so here we are on day, I think this is day six. So the bite, not much has changed. Maybe it's a little darker. Um, Body-wise, I feel better. I feel like all my symptoms are kind of skin deep, but take a look where I was really red. I'm now kind of purple. And I think that's this kind of, I'm not sure what this is, reaction starting to slow down. I think uh, I'd be surprised if it got much worse. It's really only in my kind of, my swimsuit area. See, it stops right above the knee. But then it goes up. I can't show you any higher than this. <laughs> but uh, it starts kind of right above my waist and goes down to about kind of lower two thirds of my thigh. Really interesting. This is the one symptom I wasn't really expecting. The blister, the, the, the swelling, the bruise, that's, that's all pretty contemporary with a severe bite, but this redness, I was like, huh, that's weird. So my body's quite agitated with me, as I'm sure you can tell, but uh, really, really interesting. I'm excited to see what all else is going to happen with this bite. Here we are, day eight. Day seven, I was working all day, so I actually did not record anything, but very minimal changes. Um, actually, it's less purple, I would say, today. A little more red. Um, less swelling. Less... <coughs> oops. Less overall redness and whatever. But look at that. Pretty nasty. Oh, wow. Sorry, this is a brand new phone. So... I'm not used to the recording. But very interesting. Who knows if it'll get much worse than this. Super interesting. So here we are, once again on day eight. Remember how red and how purple my leg was? A lot of that is actually starting to go away. And this red kind of color, you can see there's not even as distinct of a difference as there was between, you know, my white leg and then the irritation. So this is really interesting. I'm judging off of this. I think this will be completely gone in uh, maybe a few days, maybe two, two days, I'm going to say. By day 10, I think this should be gone. And I think we'll only have to be looking at the arm um, from here on out, I'm hoping. So I don't know if we're really gonna see any necrosis. It, it doesn't seem like that's wanting to happen as of right now, but uh, I am not sure. I would like to show that to you because this is an extreme envenomation and so many people think that you know, that's going to result in some huge necrotic crater in your arm, and that's just not true. And even if you do see necrosis, you'd be surprised as to how minimal it is. So we're going to keep 
updating. I was wanting this to be a short video, but it's not going to be one. But it'll be an interesting video for sure. But look at that. folks day 10 uh i think i accidentally popped that blister oopsie but uh the rest is um pretty normal same as the other days so we are gonna see what else happens but swelling's down redness is down i'm getting better and no visits to the doctor, nothing other than showering daily and putting the antibiotic ointment on the site. So, hmm, interesting. And I took some Benadryl a few days, but I don't feel like that really helped me that much. So, hmm, very telling. Nice and juicy. This should be day 11? I think the blister is no more. And honestly, oh gosh, sorry. Oops, oops, oops. Sorry, new camera. Um, day 11, it's just kind of numb on this kind of red area. And then the rest is kind of what ifs, not super painful or anything. I was hoping we might see a little bit of necrosis so I could show that to you guys, but I do not have high hopes. Well, it's day 12, and I wanted to once again update on the site of the bite. And I've brought a lovely brown recluse once again to accompany us, but take a look at this. Easy. Look at the redness, and the blister was here, and it has since popped. The spider sitting on top of the, uh, whoa, the <laughs> wheel bug uh, bite scar. But, oh, come here. But really interesting reaction. I was not expecting all this to have occurred in the way it has, which is very strange. Look at that. Take a look at that, folks. Pretty gnarly, huh? Now, I have not needed to take any prescription antibiotics or go to the doctor or go to the emergency room or do anything other than how you might treat a mild body flu, um, which is going to be typical um, in the treatment of a severe Loxacellus reclusa envenomation, much like this one. Now, I will mention, should you experience severe necrotic cavities developing in your skin or in or around your person, please go to the doctor. Just because I'm saying brown recluses are harmless does not mean that whatever people call brown recluse bites are not indeed dangerous. These are likely extremely rampant bacterial infections that do need to be addressed immediately. So not the poor fault of our lovely little spiders here, but rather nefarious bacteria. So, once again, take a look at that. Not really any other symptoms other than this little patch here. So I'm gonna just still keep it clean, keep it good, but I have a feeling that we are circling the finish line and that this will soon be nothing more than a good video and a fun story. Ah, uh, the sun glistens on my lovely brown recluse bite today. Lovely, lovely 
but uh, this is day 13, almost two weeks. Uh, the blister area is kind of discolored. We might see some scabbing there, but so far, no real rotting tissue or necrosis of any kind that I would classify. The skin of the bite is actually peeling, kind of like a sunburn, this top layer, but that just might be how my body gets rid of all of this, just kind of shedding the dead cells off the top. I don't think we're gonna see any like gangrenous rotting patches. So once again, not, not, not too bad, like more of a scratch, really. A good day 16. Nice and dry. Scabby. Still no dark necrosis or anything, so. Eh. Very interesting. Long time no see, folks. Sorry I haven't been updating, it's just been boring. It's not really done much other than heal now. Uh, this is day 23. So as you can see, almost fully healed up. Looks like there'll be some mild scarring, but we didn't really get to see any of that black rotting necrosis that so many attribute to these brown recluse spiders. Of course, now the planes choose to fly overhead and the dog chooses to shake for my lovely audio. But super super interesting um not really as serious as many would lead you to believe you made it you did it you got to the end congratulations do you know what you win nothing you get nothing good day sir you get nothing but you do get the joy in your hearts from knowing that you know the truth. The idiot scab finally fell off. It looks like I'm just gonna have a little scar there, but it's gonna be great and it's gonna be fine. Super interesting test. I was not expecting for the brown recluse to beat me up as much as it did, but still did not need any extra help from the doctors. So it was a super interesting test. We had a lot of interesting things happen, including that weird pseudo allergy kind of histamine reaction type thing, which was strange. And then of course, the systemic loxacellism was interesting to document in an extreme bite. So congratulations for making it to the end. I hope you learned something. I hope it was interesting. I hope it was good. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Join our channel memberships for exclusive behind the scenes content. Buy the new merchandise. And of course, above all else, tune in next time for the next episode of Jack's World of Wildlife.